in 1969 at a Northeastern University Catholic Student Center. Wow. Yeah. And Pat recalled that even though he was attracted to Judy, then it took two and a half years to get her on board. Wow. You imagine that? Why were you so slow? <laughs> because I, I had a boyfriend at the time. <laughs> <laughs> on and off, but they did meet each other's wow. families at Easter and Thanksgiving. Now, when you meet the families, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. We're all that means it's right. kind of getting so, serious. That was so the first day, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. right so one evening, Pat said to Judy, I would marry you, but I'm going to seminary to be a priest. Wow. That's true. Oh, wow. <laughs> As it turned out, he was in the seminary for about a month and a half, and it had just dawned on him that being a Catholic priest meant he wouldn't be getting married. <laughs> <laughs> so he returned to Boston, and but then he got a job playing banjo at Disneyland in California for months. Well, wait a minute, for a few months later, right? For a few months, he got a job at Disney in California yes. playing banjo, right? Playing banjo. Wow. So that's why he was off and on, because he was never there. He was <laughs> So while he was in Disneyland, California, it resulted in really expensive phone bills, which yeah, was yeah. a typical relationship and courtship. Hey, phone bills were not like they are now. So that had to be a lot of, of phone expense. Now, Judy subsequently was invited to accompany them on many of the show gigs that Pat's dad and he played locally in the Boston area, as well as Radio City Music Hall in New York and Walt Disney World in Florida. In mid-December of 1971, Pat took a few days off to surprise Judy with an engagement ring. After a deafening scream, <laughs> she did say yes. There you go. <laughs> they were married July 16th, 50 years ago today in 1972 in Kissimmee, Florida at Holy Redeemer Catholic Church. The church was tiny, and from what I understand, there was no air conditioning. Right, and that's the windows from the church. Those are windows from the church? Right. They, they, they took no kidding, let me hold this up. That's no, you no, can't. Sir, no. It's too hot, it's too heavy. Those are absolutely... Those are <laughs> so it's what you're made of now. And they light up. That's They're gorgeous. Yeah. I did that hold last on. night. Hold on, I'm gonna get this. Those are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that's the church right there. You can use oh, that. Wow. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? It took many pains to get here. <laughs> <laughs> and he will have many. That is so beautiful. So the church wasn't air conditioned? I understand. It was pretty hot. <laughs> it was pretty hot, according to what I heard. Um, there were only about, uh, the church only seated about 80 people, but they were blessed to have their friends and family, which comprised the entire wedding party that traveled down from Boston for the event. Now, listen, marriages never stop growing and changing, never. And like the gifts, gift of wisdom, they get better with age. Patrick and Judith Ann, you have now been married for 50 years. And to celebrate your journey, you have come together in the sight of God, the Father, the Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the presence of these witnesses to renew your vows of love and commitment to each other. Now, it's important to remember that when God made man in his image, he made a husband and a wife yoked together in one flesh. This means that the marriage relationship is meant to have God as the head intertwined with the husband and the wife as one. As Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, and though one may be overpowered, two can resist. Moreover, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Therefore, the marriage union is a model of God, and specifically, the Trinity. Where is my pulpit? 
I'm right here for you. <laughs> 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 I, I was about to say, I was just You are multi-talented. Let me tell you. Let me, I put this around there. You are multi-talented. I'm going to the pulpit. Oh. <laughs> 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 I have a feeling I've got a rally not like this. <laughs> now, in God's established... Oh, you'll like it hard. Oh, wait, 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 wait. She's going to read the whole oh, Bible. Oh, the, the, well, the whole Bible. Get <laughs> comfortable, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Oh, you have beautiful <laughs> eyes, by the way. I used to have men bow before me. This is incredible. It's an incredible day for everyone. <laughs> In God's established ordained plan, through his infinite wisdom, he specifically created Patrick and Judith Ann that they should become one flesh. And through this mystery, for these past 50 years, your heartbeat has become one. And through this mystery, your love has borne fruit for all men to witness as the testimony of God's sustaining love. Patrick, there really could be no greater affirmation of your word than what God gave you and this woman that you call your wife. The Bible says he that finds a wife finds a good thing. And a virtuous woman is the crown of her husband. Patrick, when you found Judith Ann, you found a good thing. That's why you've hung on to her all these years. <laughs> she is a virtuous woman and she is your crown. Judith Ann, for Patrick to have married you, there had to be something super special about you. After all, he pursued you two and a half years before you finally got on board. But he was going after something that was a good thing. And there could be no greater affirmation of your worth than what God gave you in this man that you call your husband. Of course, no marriage is perfect, and as you continue to walk in this union, I know that you realize a strong marriage requires being fully surrendered to Christ Jesus and loving your spouse as you love yourself. To have a successful and fulfilling marriage, your relationship must be built on acts of selfless love with more focus on the needs of your spouse than on your own. Now, Mark 10 6 through 9 says, A man shall leave his father and his mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Marriage is a precious gift. It's a lifelong dedication to love each other as you love yourselves in Christ Jesus. It provides you with a daily challenge to love one another more fully and more freely than you did the day before. Now, with this understanding, do you, Patrick, continue to take Judith as your beloved wife? I do. Patrick, do you promise to continue to be a kind, loving, tender, and faithful husband? I do. Do you promise to continue to love and protect Judith Ann and make her feel secure? Do you promise to show her respect, edify, exhort, and encourage her? I do. Do you promise to continue to love and cherish Judith Ann in healing and in health, in prosperity, in wealth, from glory to glory, and keep yourself only unto her? I do. With this understanding, do you, Judith Ann, continue to take Patrick as your beloved husband? I do. There was some pause there. <laughs> Judith Ann, do you promise to continue to be a kind, loving, tender, and faithful wife? Yes, I do. Do you promise to continue to love and respect Patrick and show him patience and understanding? Do you promise to edify, exhort, and encourage him? Yes, I do. Do you promise to continue to love and cherish Patrick in healing and in health and prosperity and wealth from glory to glory and keep yourself only unto him. Yes, I do. Wish to just join hands and take a look at those rings you've worn for 50 years. Wow. Wow. They've been upgraded, by the way. <laughs> Speaking of upgrade, I'm going to have Elijah upgrade me right over here. Come here, Elijah. Come here. You're going to be the pulpit, too, though.
Thank you have done amazing. Thank you so much. Somebody give him a hand clap. Thank you. I can't even put my hands down right now. I can't even put my arms down right now. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So Patrick and Judith Ann, for the past 50 years, show of hands. You have been wearing these wedding rings as an outward symbol of your ongoing love and commitment to each other. Your rings are a symbol of fidelity, unity, and your love for one another. Just like God's love, these wedding rings symbolize an unbroken and never-ending circle of love that has neither beginning nor end. This love is described in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, greater love has no man than to lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus laid down his life for his friends. And Patrick and Judith Ann have accepted his love. Now what makes this day even more special is that we know Patrick and Judith Ann have committed their lives to their Savior, Jesus Christ. He is at the center of their lives and their relationship. And on that wedding day so many years ago, they received Holy Communion, and today they're receiving it once again, renewing their commitment as husband and wife together as one flesh. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And because you both have accepted Jesus Christ, you are in him and he is in you both. You've been born again. Made brand new and old things of the past are gone. All things are made new. And by the power of his blood, Jesus washed you and cleansed you of your sins. Today you renewed your vows. It's a day of new beginnings for your marriage and for your life together. And as you partake of Holy Communion, allow the Holy Spirit to refresh your love and commitment one to another. And may the passion of your first love be reignited and burn more brightly than ever before. Lord, we thank you for the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for us. We thank you for your sacrifice. And Lord, today we ask that you bless this time of communion in the name of Jesus. Partake of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He didn't spill his blood. He shed his blood for the remission of our sins. And that blood did not cover our sins. It removed them. As far as the east is from the west, Lord, it's by your blood that we are saved. And we thank you for that blood. Right now, drink of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing Patrick and Judith Ann together all those years ago. And Lord, it had to be your grace and your mercy that kept them every moment of every day to bring them to this day of celebration. I thank you for your sustaining and faithful love for the past 50 years of their marriage. We know that you've ordained their relationship. And Heavenly Father, may their passion for you and one another burn greater than before. Anoint Patrick to be a husband to Judith Ann. And anoint Judith Ann fresh to be a wife to Patrick. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Now, Patrick and Judith Ann, 
Today, with the presence of the Lord, family, and all of these friends, you have symbolized the renewing of your marriage, your commitment by the joining of hands, the taking of vows, the blessing of rings, and partaking in Holy Communion. And it is my genuine pleasure, I pronounce you that you are still husband and wife. <laughs> Does he still have it, guys? Yeah. 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 You still got it? Are you ready? Absolutely. Patrick, you may yeah, once absolutely. again kiss your bride. Once again, Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Thoreau.